grace, power, ministry, and love. Incline your ears to wisdom and your hearts to understanding. Receive the word of God according to knowledge. Welcome to preach, to preach, to preach. Be a voice, not an echo. Join Minister Chandra for today's message. Good day, beloved. Thank you for joining me today on Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo. I am Minister Davis, and I believe I have a powerful word from the Lord today um, with the message that he gave me. I mean, I know there's sermons and there's messages, and he's given me many, and I look to him for guidance in this from day to day. And sometimes, you know, when you're studying the word, those of you who teach and minister know what I'm speaking about. You're studying the word and you know in your heart that this is something he would have you deliver because of the urgency put in your spirit. And he lays it out with almost without any extra effort from you. And today, um, I'm going to first begin with prayer, um, as I always do. Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. I thank you that I am alive for such a time as this. I thank you that you are ever watchful over us, Father. I thank you that you continue to minister to us and to feed us by your word and by your revelation day to day. Father, I thank you for this message today. I thank you that I have been empowered by your Holy Spirit to minister, to rightly divide the word of truth in love, Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray continually that I might be filled with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that I may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God that I am strengthened with all power according to your glorious power. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. Father, I come against principalities and powers, arguments, reasons, and theories, and every high thing that exalts itself against the true knowledge of God. And I cast it down in the name of Jesus and by the power of the blood given to me in that name, Father. I thank you, Father, that by your wisdom I am not ignorant of the devil's devices. That I thank you, Father God, this day for bold utterance, Father. In the name of Jesus, by your word, Father, I contend for the faith. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father God. I thank you for the power to do this. I do this from a position of victory and not for it, Father. I'm secure, and I trust all that I am in Christ Jesus. Father, I come against those that would hinder those from hearing this word. Father, I pray that this word falls upon a receptive heart today, Father. Those with spiritual ears to hear, and not only hear, to then share it with someone else, Father. For we are all one in Christ, and Father, we do not oppose ourselves, because we know in fighting one another, we are opposing ourselves, Father. And we ask you for more grace, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the grace that is sufficient. We thank you, Father God, that you have qualified us and made us fit to be dispensers of the gospel of grace. Father, I lift my voice to you today. I commit this ministry to you today, Father, trusting that you are able to keep all that I commit to you against today, Father. You are able. I trust you, and I thank you once again. In the precious name of Jesus, Father, I pray. Amen. Today's message uh, you know, the Lord has really ways of, of giving me messages that just speak. It's just the way he communicates them to me. And I understand that he does this differently for each person because we are all called in a different capacity. Although we are vying for the same thing and the same purpose, which is to draw as many to God with his goodness as we can as this day is drawing near. The name of this message is called Filthy Dreamers. Subtitle, they have crept in unawares. And this is referring to shepherds who feed only themselves. And when I first read this, I kind of was thinking in a particular way, but you know the Holy Spirit has a way of giving you understanding. I'm going to go right into the scriptures right now. I'm going to begin with Jude. All of these scriptures come out of Jude. Um, and I'm going to begin with this scripture just so that you know who you are from the get. The title I put above this one is Sanctified preserved and called and i'm going to read jude verse one and two jude the servant of the lord jesus christ and brother of james to them that are sanctified by god the father and preserved in jesus christ and called mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied this is who we are and that's only a fraction of the heritage of the saints you have been sanctified by 
our Father God, and you have been preserved in Christ Jesus, and you are called. I don't care what it is. You need to search for what your calling is, because if you belong to Christ, you have a predestined ministry and purpose, and you need to be seeking him for what it is, not for what you think it is. You need to know that you know that you know. You are where he would have you to be. As I've said before in previous messages, that's your ark. When you are where he would have you to be, when he would have you to be, you are under the shelter of his wings because you are in his will. We don't run outside of his will and to say, Lord, protect me. Although he is merciful. He, he has done it plenty of times. And you, and I'm pretty sure many listening, can testify to that. He's kept us when we weren't anywhere near crying out for him. He kept us all the way before we were able to fall to our knees and receive the free gift and accept him. Okay, I'm going to move forth to Jude verse 1 through 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, there are so many ways to go with this, but I'm going to continue on that I'm a minister from my heart what the Lord has put in it. You know, that so many people begin to go ways and seek their own paths and their ways of teaching and being and seek to have people follow them rather than minister the word of God as they follow Christ. We watch this go on. And as I move forth through this message, you're going to understand where he's taken us on this particular path and this, this message that he's given me today. And on the notes here, I put, you know, to understand that they turn from the grace of God. They put everything on works and how you act that day. And if you failed that day, I want to say again, the blessings of the Lord, the Lord cannot bless disobedience and wickedness. But I can't go into this right now because I got other messages to tell you why the blessings of the Lord don't stop on that note on the children that are his. But they can be damned, bringing unto themselves damnation. He will, he will not turn around and curse what he has blessed. But blessings can be damned by our behavior and by our rebellion and our disobedience. But, okay, I'm going to get back on course because that's a whole other message, you know, because so many people are uh, being caused to fall uh, because of misunderstanding of that. But I'm going to stay on course today. I'm going to move to a section here. I call this section, uh, you know what, we're going to go down here. I'm going to go, I'm going to go another way. These people that he speaks about that are filthy dreamers. I'm going to go to this particular section first and I'll go, I'll back up. Filthy dreamers. I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to try to keep this in a, a particular order here. I'm going to read Jude 1, 8 through 10. Likewise, although these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, they despise dominion and they speak evil of dignitaries. Yet Michael, the archangel, when he contended with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. He did not dare bring railing accusation against him, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts. In those things they corrupt themselves. We can go back to the word of the God. I'm just going to tell you right now, the word of God interprets itself. We let the Bible interpret the Bible. We, the Bible is not left to some private interpretation. The Bible will interpret itself if you study. That's why the word of God tells us to study to show ourselves approved. He doesn't just say read the Bible. I say that again. He doesn't just say read the Bible. He tells us to study to show ourselves approved. It's a big difference between studying and simply reading. Although reading, the Lord will speak to you and give you revelation. You have got to study. And when I think of the, the Bible calls the devil the accuser of the brethren. The, when you get the accusing and attacking people, that is the spirit of the enemy. You are bringing railing accusations of them. You don't know what you're talking about. And then even the Bible tells us here, they're speaking of nothing but what they know naturally or what they think they know naturally. Because if they were moving in the spirit, they would know not to attack a brother and sister in Christ in the first place. So when you get to attacking and causing, and I, this just ticks me off, I, and it is righteous indignation, I will not hesitate to say it ticks me off, because you cause baby Christians to fall. They don't understand. They see this infighting, and then they see everyone attacking this minister, and of course it's going to make them fearful. They don't want to be attacked that way. They haven't even been built up strong enough in the spirit to withstand. They haven't been fortified in the Lord to be able to withstand attack. Now me, <laughs> I, people who attack me, I would tell you now, you barking up the wrong spiritual tree. 
because he's built me ready for it. You won't cause me to crumble. You will not cause me to back down. I married persecution the day I knew I accepted the free gift and of salvation from my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I, there is no shame in it, nor is there any timidity in me. I thank God for his bold utterance. And that's what's missing in the church today. A lot of faint-hearted people who just don't want to tell the truth because they'd rather be liked. And I'll tell you right now, I don't need to be liked. But I know those who are seeking the goodness of God and who love the world that is to come rather than this one, they will love you because you're telling them the truth. Okay, I'm getting on the tangent again. Let me go on back down here. <laughs> and verse 10. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally. And these are people who have gotten carnal. This is natural. They're, I made a ministry message, do you serve God or your own belly? You know, you people that claim they had discernment of this and discernment of that, and they're actually acting out on their own thoughts, feelings, emotions, jealousy, selfish ambition, and it has nothing to do with the Lord. They serve in their own belly. That's a brute beast. And the Lord, in the word, the scriptures tell us, right here in verse 10, that in doing these things, they corrupt themselves. You can't stay on course, on that thin, that narrow path, when you are belittling and attacking other those in the body of Christ. And right here where it says, they, they, they despise dominions. These are authority. This is authority. Like the Lord told me that I had the gift of a ruler. He told me to look it up so I could understand what it was, that I've been given great dominion, great authority to speak spiritual life into many people. That is my spiritual gift. That is my dominion. And you have people who speaking about some ministers I know, Minister Paul and various other ones, and people I know are ministers of God. And they are speaking against, their authority is being spoken against by people who are, are, are acting out in the flesh and acting out carn carnally. And they speak evil of dignitaries. These are people who are in authority. Again, ministers and pastors. They're speaking against other ministers and pastors and leaders. And even the archangel knew not to do that. Because when you become an accuser, you are not exuding the spirit of God. You are not exuding the wisdom of God. The wisdom of a God that comes from above. I mean, we've read the scriptures. The wisdom of God is first pure, it's peaceable, it's gentle, it is easy to entreat, <laughs> full of mercy, full of good fruit, without partiality, and without hypocrisy. Ponder on those words. They're in the scripture. I'm not speaking anything that is not in the word of God. We're going to go down. How do you recognize some of the characteristics of people who have this particular wickedness in them, who have succumbed to this wickedness, this, this selfish ambition, this, this, this foul spirit? Because that's what it is. But the Bible describes this for us too. I'm going to read Jude 1, 8, 13, then 16 through 19. Mind you that all these will be put in the um, video notes so that you can go back and read this and study this yourself and pray to the Lord concerning these things, which I would always have you do. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers, they defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignitaries. Had to put that there again because that's a description of them. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame. They are wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness and darkness forever. I want y'all to catch that part. People that do that, they are reserved to blackness and darkness forever. Because those who come out like that were never the Lord's. They would not. Oh God, I'm, I'm going to get that scripture for you, but I, I'm going to stay on course right quick. <laughs> These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust, and their mouth speaking great swelling words having men's person in admiration because of advantage. They, they start complimenting people and buttering people up just to get them on their side. They butter them up to get them to come. Manipulative. That's witchcraft. That's what it is. I'll say it again. That's witchcraft. Any form of manipulation is witchcraft. And I'm a, it's scripture. Do your, do, your, do your work. Look up witchcraft and what it is. It's in the word. Number seven, verse 17. But beloved, re remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles 
our Lord Jesus Christ. How they did tell you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves. They are sensual and they having not the spirit. <laughs> mockers. How many of y'all done got mockers on your videos? <laughs> I don't even have to ask a few. Mockers. And, the, and he's talking about the shepherd. These are people who were supposed to be Christ. We're not talking about the people in the world. We expect them to do that. I mean, come on. We're supposed to be the influencers, not the influenced. So if you can't take mockers and people in the world taunting and yakking, you might as well just lay down now and ask the Lord to take you on home and be with Jesus right now. Because this is not for the fainted heart and people who have thin skin. They attacked Christ for envy. And we are not greater than our master. They will attack us too. But let me tell you one thing. He has fortified us with his spirit. We are able to withstand the tax if we shield ourselves in him. I mean, when I think about the fact that in the days they were, people were torn apart by lions. They were sawn apart. And so much so to where when they were being ripped apart by lions, they were blessing the Lord and praising him while they were being torn apart. So much so, and I think it was Caesar's. God, help me if I got that right. He was plugging his ears. I'll get his name. That ain't who I'm talking about right there. But I'll get the leader's name. He was plugging his ears saying, stop it, stop it, stop it, because they were blessing the Lord while they were being torn apart by lions. He was more terrified than the people who were being torn apart because they were praising God in perfect praise while they were being torn apart by lions. That is nothing but the Holy Spirit. And if they can be that way, the, the, the taunts and the fact that you're not favored and people team up, so what? I tell people a minute, is that all you got? The Lord delivered me from people a long time ago, and that is the most freeing thing you're going to ever experience. When you know it is all about Christ, all about who you are in him. And it is not about what people call you, it's what you answer to. And you should only be answering to what the Lord calls you. The Lord calls you beloved. He calls you justified. He calls you redeemed. He calls you new. <laughs> he calls you children of God. He calls you kings and priests. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> you answer to what he calls you, not what the world calls you. That's just a little spiritual nugget. You're going to have to, I'm trying to stay on track here because the spirit gets to taken over and we'll have a revival in here in this studio. <laughs> Glory to God. Let me go on down here. Okay. Back to markers. That's where I left off. That we, we know that we have markers nowadays. We have murmurs. We go to that again. People who are murmuring. You hear people complaining. They're walking by their own lust. They're doing what they feel. They're putting twists on the scriptures so they can do what they want to do. They defile the flesh. They despise dominion. They hate people in authority. They only want to do what people in authority would have them to do. And they come against you if they see you with followers and they see that you got to follow. And people need to understand that it's never about them following us. They're following Christ. That's why some people have lure. But everybody that has lure ain't of God. They got some mega churches that I know are the synagogue of Satan. And those people will be revealed. I don't have to name. The Lord will bring it to naught. Let's move forth. Okay, I want to make sure I don't miss here. Let me go back up here because I said the judgment. I want to do that last. Warning, remembrance, and turning from you know, what it's going to bring. And the judgment. Mm -hmm. We're going to go back up at the top of this first. The Lord warns us of these things. And we have to be aware because there's, the Bible told us that they have crept in. These are people that are in the churches right now. People who smile in your face. People who act like they're your friend. They have crept in unaware. They're around you right now. And I believe that's why this was put on my heart so urgency. It hit so hard. I had originally came in here planning to record another message today. But this one took precedent. And that's what matters. A warning, remembrance, and turning from the ways of God. What this is going to bring. I'm going to read Jude 1, 5 through 7. I would therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this. How that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterwards destroyed them that believe not. You got to believe at all times. Don't allow anything to rob you of your belief. Number six, and the ages and the, I mean, and the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. He hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto judgment of the great day. Verse seven, even Sodom and Gomorrah, 
and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh. We know what strange flesh is, homosexuality. People don't like that, but that's what he's talking about, and we're going to keep it real. Or shall I say I like to keep it truth? <laughs> that's the truth. He's speaking about homosexuality. Going after strange flesh are set forth an example. He set them as an example. I want y'all to key on that. That was an example. If he did not tolerate homosexuality and foulness then, he will not tolerate it now. Don't think for a minute. He won't be mocked. He is long-suffering because he does not want anyone to die without him. He is not willing that any should perish. I want y'all to understand that word perish. He's not willing that any should perish. Many of us going to die because you died to pass from this life into eternal life. But when you perish, you are no more in his presence. He is not willing for that to happen. That's why we got to warn, no matter how strong the attack get. Because you know, they're making homosexuality and all these things just it. They lifting it up day by day. Just pay attention. I don't have to point this out. Anyone with eyes to see can see. And we're going to continue that sentence. <laughs> going after strange flesh and set forth an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Let's go on further down on the judgment. <laughs> the Bible says, woe unto them. Judgment is inevitable. And we're going to dissect that word inevitable. The noun form means it is an unavoidable event. Judgment of people who do these things. Judgment is an unavoidable event. And we ain't just talking about homosexuality. We're talking about all those that oppose God in every way who come against his true knowledge in living and being every day in every way. They refuse to accept the love of the truth. This is their future. So if it's you and you refuse to accept the love of the truth in Christ, this is your future because you're not dying. You're going to live forever somewhere. And I can promise you, if you think you believe in heaven, there is a hell. And even if you don't believe in it, guess what? There's still a heaven and there's still a hell. He cannot deny himself because you refuse to believe. Jude 1, 11, 14 through 15. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain huh, and ran greedily after the error of Balaam. Those of you who haven't read that story, you might want to go read that. For reward, for reward and perish and in the gang saying of Kor. And Enoch, also the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these sayings. Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. Oh yeah, those of us who are raptured are coming with him. To execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them. All their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed. And of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. And this word hard speeches mean harsh words. Those who are speaking harsh words against Christ, his believers, and his followers. Because guess what? Just like when the Lord, the, the Father says, those who don't receive Christ, don't receive him. Those who have received Christ, they receive the Father too. It is the same for his children. He was the firstborn of many brothers. We are his children. We are the word wrapped in the flesh all over again. Those of us who are saved have the word of God, and his spirit in us. So we the word all over again because it is Christ who dwells in us and we live in him. So those who do not receive us, they don't receive the father. I say that again. Those who don't receive us, they don't receive the father either. Let's go on down here. <laughs> uh, huh. The Bible describes these people as spots and blemishes at our love. Jude 1 verse 12. These are spots in your feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. <laughs> Clouds they are. Without water, this is who they are. Carried about of winds, trees whose fruit wither it. Without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the root. <laughs> I want y'all to understand this. People who come against you and choose to stray against the word of God and attack you, they were never his. Because if they were, I'm going to find that scripture, they would have remained with us. 
He said, these are spots in your feast. They're spots uh, 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 at your love. They feed themselves without fear. They are carried away like clouds without water. We already know what happens to them. They disperse. They gone. They carry it about with the winds. They are fruit that is withered. That is fruitless. Because a lot of people, they tend to flock toward people when they see their talents. A lot of people have many talents. But the Lord said he, he didn't say you would know them by their talents. He said you would know them by their fruit. Just watch the fruit of their mouth. The fruit of their lips. The kind of things they say. The way they handle themselves. The way they handle other people. That's how you're going to know it's love. You know, the amazing thing, the Lord, that with me, you hear so many people say they have the love of God in their heart. And I say, really? When I go back to the scriptures, I'm going to find this scripture for you. But the scripture tells us to add to our faith, virtue, and to add to our virtue, knowledge. Hmm. I was like, huh. And to add to knowledge, we got all these steps that we have to go through before we ever enter into love. And when you're watching someone, they don't show brotherly kindness because all this comes before love. Brotherly kindness, godliness, patience, add to your faith virtue, add to your virtue knowledge, add to your knowledge, uh, <laughs> add to your knowledge patience, add to your, I mean temperance, and add to your temperance patience. And to patience you will add brotherly kindness. You don't even see brotherly kindness, so how are you going to say you ain't got to love? Because after brotherly kindness, then comes the love. You act full of hate toward one another, but you say you got the love of God. And there is no way around having the love of God if you think you're going to enter into the kingdom of God, a kingdom of heaven. The Bible also tells us, you know, for what, a, what, what, what the, do we need to do about this as Christians? And that's why I use that particular verse. He tell, the, the, the scripture tells us to earnestly contend for the faith. And that was just interesting to me. Jude 1 verse 3. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of a common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that she should earnestly contend, earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. We need to contend for the faith, not the faith that people want to twist and make their own, the gospel of grace in the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the faith, the measure of faith that he gave us. We need to contend that that not die because it's being twisted and perverted and more and more left out to somebody that made their own faith because it's not the faith of Christ. And I, this is what he's calling us to do. We need to contend. We need to be prepared to contend for the faith. And you know what happens when you contend? You might get a few bruises. But you will not, you will not perish. You will not be defeated. You are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. And if you look up the definition of conqueror, a conqueror is somebody who wins all the time. And he tells you you are more than one. Let's move forth to Jude 1, 20 through 21. And this is a call. A call to action. And that call is to persevere. We are calling the body of Christ to persevere. Verse 20 reads, But ye, beloved, building up yourself on your most holy faith. How do you do that? By praying in the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to stop there just for a second. <laughs> and I'm going to say again because I feel I need to by the Spirit. Those of you who are teaching are attacking people who are being baptized with the Holy Spirit and saying that the Holy Spirit in the baptism does not exist no more, you lie against the truth that is a spirit of error, error and is a spirit of the enemy. People are still being saved. Therefore, the baptism must follow. It has not ceased. Those who have his spirit are not praying with tongues of the devil. I have various languages. I can't even count how many I got in there no more. And they are poured forth and praying in the spirit and to use as the Holy Spirit sees fit. They are power and demons fear people who pray, pray in the spirit. That's why they're attacking people, trying to keep them from doing it. And I'm telling you, if you're praying in the spirit, you get on your knees and you lift your hands to the heaven and you let the Holy Spirit take over your tongue and they're going to flee and angels are set loose and you are breaking yokes and destroying 
bondage off people's life because you are praying for people on the other side of the world that you might not even know. You are praying for people who are about to die and don't even know it. That is the power of praying in the spirit. And don't you let anyone cause you to back down from it. And for those of you who are coming against people praying in the spirit, saying it don't exist, you shut your mouth in the name of Jesus and by the power of the blood. The blood is against you because that is not the spirit of God. Let's move down. Verse 21 reads, keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of your Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. So he's named some things here for us to persevere. How do we persevere? We build ourselves up on our most holy faith. How? By praying in the Holy Ghost. And also to keep ourselves in love. You hear that? That's the only way you're going to persevere. Keep yourself in love. I don't care what anybody is saying. And I know people think love means you don't correct people. Y'all better go on with all that. Let's not get this twisted. You correct. It's the heart behind what you're doing. And you can't fool the Lord behind the heart of what you're doing. There is righteous indignation and you correct people because you love them. You don't do it trying to cause them to fall and trying to call it godly correction. You're not fooling nobody. The Lord see your heart and guess who else see your true spiritual state? The demons you working with. So stop the attacks and calling it the love of God. And he tells us to do it looking for mercy. We know that's new to us every day. His mercy is new to us every day. Hang on to that. Don't let it go and never allow fear to enter. The scripture also, we are instructed. This is Jude verse 1, 22 through 23. And some of us, we are to have compassion, making a difference. And others, we save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Mm, we hate the garment that is the garment that is spotted by the flesh. Boy, I could go into a whole nother ministry message on that. Y'all have to forgive me because all kind of messages be coming to me at once, and I have to kind of pull myself back to the message at hand because just that sentence right there, I could I could go on. <laughs> <laughs> and others saved with fear and pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Mm. So he tells us to have mercy on those who doubt. I'm going to dissect that. Have compassion, making a difference. Have mercy on those who doubt. Snatch those from the fire. We are, we're going to have to snatch some people for the fire. I told you before, most people ain't going to come. We as Christians, by the Spirit,